Hey there sexy vault dwellers, Stormy Skies 369 here with another beginners video and this is all about the daily ops uplink. I'll do a decryption video when it's been updated to the game on the 27th with the lock and loaded update but until then let's make sure you know all there is to know about daily ops so far. I've put these into categories so you can easily find the part you're looking for without having to watch the whole video. Okay so let's start with the basics. You can start the daily ops at any time. You can still travel to the daily ops dungeon even if you're overcumbered and when the ops has finished you spawn back at the location you started ops from. You can complete the mission in under 8 minutes solo. I did the video of me completing it by the skin of my teeth when it was first released. However I've done it solo since and sometimes there's no enemies and it feels quite lonely. Ok let's start with how you actually get into the daily ops game. Go to your map and you'll see a little box here. It's always worth checking what ops is running that day and make sure you're ready for it. The easiest example is if the enemies can only be killed with a melee weapon make sure you've got the best melee on you and maybe change your perk cards to a melee build. The melee build has now been fixed and plays more like it did when the game was first released. By far the easiest option is to do it in a team. If you're in an open world join the daily ops team or create one. You will start with a 25% extra boost and you can get up to 100% if the four of you are fully bonded. When a team member starts the mission you will get a notification asking you if you want to join. So let's talk about the daily ops locations. At the moment there are four locations. The Burning Mine, Burrows, Valley Galleria and Vault 94. These locations reset daily. And don't go to say like the Valley Galleria and expect the ops to start. You can only join via the option, not by fast travelling to the location. Let's look at the daily ops enemies. These enemies rotate daily, so not each time you play. And are currently super mutants, so we've got mutants and mutant bloodhounds. Robots, and they are Mr Gutsies, Protectrons, Ibots and the Robo Brains. We don't get Liberators or Assaultrons in there. I hate Assaultrons. Okay, we also have Blood Eagles and they could be wearing Power Armor chassis and they come with Attack Dogs as well, but they're not too tough. Okay, Enemy Mutations. So as well as the locations and the enemies, there are mutations that rotate daily. There are four of these and they are Resilient, Volatile, Freezing Touch and Active Camouflage. So as well as those four mutations mentioned, the enemy also has piercing gaze. This basically means that your stealth is useless. Don't try the Chinese stealth suit thinking you can creep around because they can see you. They can always see you. So let's take a look at these mutations. Resilience. Okay, this means enemies can only be killed with the final hit being a melee attack. If in a team, we tend to have one doing a melee damage and the others doing the impact damage with maybe a ballistic or energy weapon. This can be a tough one if you're running solo. So maybe try the hack and slash legendary perk. It's not great, but it can do area damage when hitting with a full vats. Okay, volatile means that the enemies are going to explode on death. So again, it's handy to change your perk cards. Because I use explosive weapons, I already have fireproof and sizzling style. Those perks with power armor means that the explosives barely do any damage unless I grenade myself, which does happen, especially in the small spaces. Freezing touch is a pain in my ass. This mission is basically a race against time. If you hit with an enemy with this mutation, everything is going to slow down. So definitely keep that in mind if you run low health, because using that stim pack whilst frozen is so slow. You could die before even getting that stim pack in you. And the last mutation is active camouflage. This means it's like every enemy is using a stealth boy until they attack and then they become visible. I tend to use a HUD mod on my power helmet or maybe take some berry mint tats. Okay, the daily ops mission itself. Currently the mission always remains the same and that's uplink. First you need to activate the signal repeater. When you have done this, it will give you the locations of the alpha and bravo uplinks. Same way to activate these again, walk up to them and hold A, but this time stay close to the uplink to connect it quicker. You can keep track of this in the bar and for every player close by it speeds up so it really helps if you have a team with you. Whilst the uplink is being connected you have to fight off swarms of enemies so be ready and remember stay close to that uplink. 
When you have secured the Alpha Link, you will need to locate and boost the Bravo uplink. It doesn't matter which order you secure these uplinks in. The repeater and the uplinks are always in the same locations for each dungeon. So once you have found and activated these three, you will need to go to the location on the bottom of your map. This spawns in the final wave of enemies. There's very specific enemies that you need to kill here and they will have a diamond. So it's kind of like selective killing. You don't have time to kill everything and you can't because they just keep on coming. So focus on your mission soldier and kill those diamond enemies. When they are killed, you will have the final boss. He's tough but totally killable. Do this quick and the timer stops. Okay, and now you've completed daily ops and you should have around 5 minutes to kill off anything and to pick up all those goodies. So starting with the drop loot, this will always be stim packs of some sort, diluted or super. You can possibly also get grenades and ammo. The ammo dropped has rules to it, so if you're using a ranged weapon, you get that ammo back. If you're using a melee, it seems to randomise the ammo drop. The same if you're using a syringe, god knows why you would be, or a mini nuke, missiles, plasma or fusion cores. Any of those weapons with that ammo will randomly decide what ammo you get in your meat piles. I hope that makes sense. Okay, on to the real rewards. There are tiers of rewards depending on how quickly you complete the mission. So, completing the mission will give you 300 XP and between 25 and 500 caps and a random legendary. You may also get some scribs, stim packs, aid and ammo. If you complete the mission in under 16 minutes, you get an additional 500 XP and there's a rumour of a chance of a rare plan. And I say a rumour because it's much more likely you're going to get a common armour or workshop plan. The second tier is Paladin if you can complete it in under 12 minutes. So on top of your basic reward, you're going to get an additional legendary item and a better chance of getting a rare plan. And finally, if you can get the Elder tier and complete the mission in under 8 minutes, you have a much better chance of getting a rare plan. Rare rewards will only be dropped if you're level 50 or higher. So let's have a look at the plans that are exclusive to the daily ops. So in no particular order you have the symptomatic. Basically this cures all your diseases, it only takes a second or two. Next we have the meat bag stash. And over here we have the poodle sleeping bag. Up on the ceilings, I'll turn my pit boy off, we have the asylum light. They're not very bright at all but I do like the look of them. Okay, we also get the plan for the Hellstorm missile launcher. It doesn't display very well. And once you've got the plans, you can craft this, but not as a legendary. In the corner here, we have the super mutant tube. I love it, it's awesome. And over here, we have the crowd bench seat. Okay, this is the scavenger solar panel. And it gives out 5 electricity, which isn't too bad. It takes up a really small space. This is the super reactor. Okay, this gives out 100 electricity, but it does require quite a bit to make it. The main problem with this reactor is just the size of it. It's absolutely huge. So you need a real big building area or a big vault to put it in. We've also got the Crusader's pistol, plasma cutter, and the Whistle in the Dark, which can be made legendary with two legendary modules. Last of the weapon plans is the War Grave, which again can be crafted as a legendary item. There's a recipe for Liquid Courage, which is great if you're fighting Earl, because it makes you immune to fear attacks. For outfits, we have the Swamp Camouflage Suit. We also get a Power Armor Paint Plan. It's for the X01. It's called Scorched Paint. Come in the white screens because the light's a bit better. Really is an awesome looking power armour paint. So we have the Brotherhood Special Ops suit and Brotherhood Special Ops mask. There are also five plans for the Brotherhood recon armour. Two arms, two legs and a chest piece. The only way to obtain legendary Brotherhood recon armour is to learn the plan and have it drop for you. You can't craft these using legendary modules. OK, so that's everything you need to know to complete daily ops, but I do also have a few tips to help you along the way. 
So my first tip is about rewards. If the time finishes or for whatever reason you don't get to check what rewards you were given, you just need to go onto your Pip-Boy and look under the new category and they're all be listed there. You should always join a team, even if you're playing solo, you still get that 25% bonus. But also, before any big fight, you want to warm those muscles, so use the punch bag for an agility boost and the weight bench for a strength boost. These will help kill the enemies even quicker. So as well as a punch bag or a musical instrument, you can choose perk cards with AP regions. Action points are even more important if you're going solo. So if you're not in a team, you should be using the Lone Wanderer perk card or squad manoeuvres if you're in a team. Both these cards will help you regen AP faster. Regardless of being in a team or not, perk card Action Girl or Action Boy regenerates AP up to 45% quicker when the card is maxed out. And the perk card Marathoner consumes less action points when sprinting, so that's a must. Okay, with these other buffs, you've got to bear in mind that you cannot stack from the same category, but you can use one from each category. So let's start with the obvious choice. In Bobbleheads, you're going to choose the Endurance. There's no other Bobbleheads that are really going to help you with your AP here. I've chose five magazines that I'd recommend, so choose one of these if you have them available. Okay, you've got Astonishingly Awesome Tales, issue 7, which gives you plus 5 max AP. Guns and Bullets, issue 4, which gives you a plus 6 AP regeneration. Live and Love, issue 4, gives you a plus 10 AP regen when you're on a team. Live and Love, issue 7, gives plus 10 max AP when on a team. Scout's Life, issue 8. Reduce the AP cost by 20% while sprinting. So that's the five magazines to choose from. There may be others that I've missed. Feet is a little more complicated. Basically, you want anything with sugar because that's what's going to give you the AP boost. Corn soup is the easiest to make, but you can use sugar bombs or just plain sugar, though it's not as good. There's also honey, but if you're a herbivore, the blackberry honey crisps are double and they're just crazy in AP. Same with drinks. There's loads that are going to boost your AP. Potato juice and simple soup flour tea give you a plus 10 max AP and are simple to make. There's lemonade or hard lemonade and pretty much every Nuka drink will give your AP a boost. There are many others, that's just a few of them. I would recommend putting either a drink or a food item on your favourite wheel. So as your time for the uplink gets close to filling, use your fast wheel to top up before running to the next uplink. Okay, my other tip is to pop open a lunchbox. It gives you 25% extra XP boost and everyone's happy when someone opens a lunchbox. Okay, so that's all the tips I've got for daily ops. Get all that under your belt ready for the expansion on the 27th of April. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.